Hello everyone and welcome. It's about time I finish these bad boys. <laughs> I say bad, but uh, you know, they're pretty fragile. <laughs> um, the stealth suits are almost painted. I did these before in a bunch of short videos. I was trying to get them um, painted in short batches, but that was not uh, possible. I was hoping that I can um, speed the editing process a bit and uh, move faster uh, and get the videos out sooner. But that was definitely not the case. Uh, as you can see, the base coat and uh, the black primer is uh, done. And now I am working on the secondary color. Um, I realized what uh, the masters are doing. I have documented myself and uh, I've been studying this whole time. And uh, what they are doing right now is doing a lot of uh, layers for the base color and then shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. Now, here's the thing that I realized. While uh, they say that you should paint all of these in in order to simulate the way light falls on miniatures. I don't have the time. <laughs> I really don't have the time to spend like uh, tens of hours on a single miniature to uh, create its um, base color and then uh, the areas where the light is more intense and where I should have it uh, lighter and then you know, create the shadows using washes and so on and so forth. And while they say that because miniatures are small and light does not reflect the same way off of their surfaces as they would a in real life because they're incredibly small, I tended to notice that light behaves honestly the same especially when photographing them and you get a, you can uh, see it uh, right here on his gun which is a cylinder and right now f the uh, way it it reflects the light you can see right now it is a line where it's incredibly bright the paint so the the miniatures do reflect the light in the um, correct way. The thing is, you just need a really, really bright light. Uh, and yes, I am using a painting light right now. It, it's powerful. I have the setup, which is uh, the LED, which are the LEDs on top of uh, my painting studio and uh, an additional uh, very, very bright bulb that is giving me a warmer light reflected from uh, the wall but it still looks just fine with the base coat and I'm not going to go for high quality and paint uh, those highlights uh, and so on and so forth I realize that right now I just want to focus on getting a few armies ready and uh, what I mean by a few armies I'm still talking in very low cost the i recently did a uh check to see uh what the points value of my uh all of my tau are and they are very very uh low <laughs> there are only 300 points now when i do finish uh painting everything in my back catalog the first thing that i want to do is to get these guys more units and for that i am going to buy first of all i'm going to buy a uh 
not boarding patrol. I, I want to buy a combat patrol. Combat patrol box. Uh, especially because uh, I get more stealth suits and I want that fire, uh, the fire, the breacher team um, set up with. I, I really like the tiny turret. I can't wait to paint that one. Uh, but yeah, that's the plan. And after that, I want a full squad of broadsides. So that's, I need to get two more broadsides. And uh, I know that one is coming, and I still have to paint the Dark Strider. So there are a lot of miniatures that you have to paint when you want an, uh, a decent force of at least a thousand points. And even with uh, the full uh, combat patrol box, I will only reach 700 points. With all the additional ones, I'm aiming for 1000 points for the Tau. This is the bare minimum in theory for a small game, for a game of 40k, not, you know, combat boxes or whatever they're saying. Because uh, the combat boxes are way less than a thousand points. Even the big Leviathan box, which I bought, uh, actually did not come with full 1000 point Tyranid army or 1000 point... Um, uh, space Marine Army, unless you uh, put the upgrades for the Space Marine. If you're putting the upgrades, then yes, in theory, you can go even uh, above uh, 1,000 points. So, um, yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty slow and tedious process getting these armies uh, up to snuff. And uh, especially since, as I am recording this, uh, it is October, and I took a bit of time to feed the algorithm and work on some orcs because of Orktober. And uh, yeah, it's go. It's really, really slow process. I started this hobby roughly two years ago. Yes, uh, and I still don't have a fully painted army. Bear in mind that uh, I do have limited time, like I said before, and that I spend a lot of my free time working on other projects that are important to my family, like uh, the house that I'm working on. And that's not going to change anytime soon. But I do want to get a hold of the situation, and I have bought uh, the airbrush, which should help me out further. And... Uh, from what I noticed, uh, by using it only on one miniature so far, is that it is indeed uh, a time saver, especially if you're careful with uh, with painting after it. Because um, I experienced a lot less chipping while uh, I used that. Uh, I was able to do much thinner coats, and I had a much, much better coverage than I did with, uh, w without it, while using brushes. But uh, again, um, I'm getting to back on topic with, with uh, these guys. As you can see, it's pretty tedious because you know, once you have a layer of paint, on you don't want to mess it up and you have to go back and waste more time so i need to take my time and be very very careful not to um uh spill or not to go uh, over on uh any other surface that i have already painted and i also uh cannot hold it in I um, saw that if I hold the miniature uh, by itself instead of the painting handle, I will inevitably chip the paint. So while these guys I did as neat as possible, I have experience with other miniatures that I definitely need uh, to uh, use a painting handle for absolutely everything that I paint. Because if not, um, 
I will chip the paint and I will have to spend more time to fix it because fixing a chip paint for me at least it, uh, I just have to come again with another uh, with the previous color and just go over and fix what has been uh, broken it's pretty short but if I have to do it many many times it's not going to be very very pleasant ah finally the sergeant the chassis i want to say because um i can't really remember let me just do a quick check as to what it's supposed to be called uh chasvre sorry 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 uh, this guy was the most fun to paint, especially because he had the uh, plasma, heavy plasma rifle thingy. And I wanted to do some effects on it, and I used uh, technical paint. The green, I, I went with green instead of blue um, for him, and I wanted to uh, give it that green glow that I did use on the very first model that I painted the Necron uh, Warrior and I used that green technical paint oh, Warp Store Glow I think it is that's coming soon but again I don't I already mentioned that I'm doing the, like uh, um, the second uh, secondary color for the armor I went with this um, green and orange uh, choice because it looks really really good by the way the green is war boss green and uh, the orange is I believe um, tau like ochre and yeah you know, it looks good in, in instead of you know like having the uh, far side which is like corn red and um, the white for the viewer lacept which is what i saw that all the artworks are using i decided to make my own uh, little thingy uh, a bit inspired by borkan i think and um this is something that i'm really comfortable with painting right now at my skill level and i think it looks uh, unique enough that i'm going to uh, keep going with it for my army Right, so uh, as we are approaching the end, I think, but it's still going to be a few more minutes while I add the accent colors. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, hey, give me topics that uh, um, you want me to talk about during these videos maybe you would like uh, to hear me talk about something or maybe you would like to um, know more about the lore I don't uh, claim to be an authority in matters of lore but I have read a lot of books especially I I am completely up to date with uh, the Horus heresy for that matter and as for um, Tau, for example, I started with the Farsight series, and unfortunately, I didn't put them on my phone. I tried to listen to them from my because I, I use audiobooks, and I didn't put them on my uh, phone, so I didn't, um, I wasn't able to constantly keep listening to them while I was uh, commuting to work or stuff like that. I tried to listen to them while I was painting, and I think I got the order wrong somehow and I started the book got halfway through it and then started with another book also uh, for me it seemed a little bit boring I know they're not you know like Space Marine and constant battles I'm not really that much into bolter porn but um, the action didn't seem to be moving as much as I would have liked for that but I will make an effort and uh, listen to the entire books in the proper order. There is a little intrigue with a Tau uh, diplomat being possessed by a demon or something. And I'm like, okay, but weren't those guys like, uh, you know, incredibly 
doll psychically and uh, what is the dead demon getting out of it i will see what i get when i get to it i will pay more attention i need to uh, I, I am of the opinion that you should never judge a book by its cover and there must be uh, absolutely something of value to uh, each and every one of those works i can't wait to actually read them but i just couldn't uh, um, give them my full attention as of yet so uh, where was i um oh yes the accent colors um what am i doing here i am painting the exhaust with a uh, lead belcher and doing uh, whatever metallics I think uh, are necessary. I am doing, of course, using the same color, um, which, as, as I mentioned before, is lead belcher. I was toying with the idea of making like uh, all of the insides um, with like lead belcher. But I decided against it uh, and instead used it as more of a accent color and decided to keep as much of the uh, black as possible. Now, uh, I know that a lot of people uh, and some of the bigger names uh, on YouTube and on painting miniatures uh, say that uh, you should prime it black and then do an acrylic black all over that. I honestly don't see the point and I don't see the difference. And especially when painting, like I said, multiple miniatures and trying to keep a schedule, that is simply not going to be feasible, at least for me. So uh, I don't see why if it's black, it's black. And whenever I come with over with my uh, Abaddon black or even my craft by my black craft paint uh, over the painted uh, the spray can uh, primer, uh, it looks uh, absolutely identical. So i don't see why i have to do it uh, and go all over it i'm just going to try and protect that black primer it's uh, less of a chance of it chipping just keep it like that and we, whenever i make a mistake i will just cover it with like i mentioned abaddon black or uh, a black craft paint that i have uh another metallic accent color that i used is of course loom R rune lord brass for um uh any of uh, the accents like the brown tau symbols or certain rivets as you can see right now the little uh, round uh, wheel I, I honestly don't understand what that thing does for the Tao, I would have liked to know that if anybody from like uh, the lore side of uh, the hobby uh, watches this channel and can correct me, what are those round thingies on all the Tao weapons and what is their point? I assume that uh, for the armors, are, they're just embellishments to make them look a bit more cooler, but I, I don't see what uh, they do for uh, the weapons. And especially for a like you know well, modern inspired militaristic uh, faction, uh, I honestly don't see what the point of that symbol on the weapons are. Maybe somebody can tell me. Unless of course it's the rule of cool, in which case I I totally understand. The rule of cool is the best uh, answer to any question whenever it comes to Warhammer because. Again, when we ha when we take it too far and say, oh, everything needs to have like a in-depth reason, and uh, we take away from the fun side of the hobby. And when you take into account how this this whole universe, which right now is the biggest that I have encountered so far, 
uh, started by a bunch of guys just having fun in their basement playing some sci-fi war game and saying things like, oh, I want to make a Inquisitor and I'm going to name him um, what was Sherlock, uh, Ob- uh, Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau. Yeah, that, that was the name, Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau. That's that's just insane. That is just absolutely freaking amazing, and I, I and it just spiraled out into this like uh, ten thousand year epic that had that actually, when you take into account all the Xeno factions and everything that happened, goes back actually sixty million years, which is insane. Uh, again, for the Battle of the Guns, I used again Lead Belcher. Uh, just to give them a heads up, drilling these barrels was really, really hard. Uh, I tried to, but I did make a few mistakes. One of them, I think, is pretty busted, and I didn't know how to fix it. So I just left it like that and just painted over it, and hopefully it will not be noticeable. Uh, but uh, whenever you drill your barrels, take really, really care, especially for these very, very thin ones from, from the towel you, you can easily snap um, snap the uh, very thin plastic that ends up there also I don't have a power drill for the miniature work I just use my, my uh, drill bit that I bought that is supposed to be for a very very tiny uh, hobby drill I think or something and I just slapped like um, handle on it and most of the time I don't even use the handle because the handle I needed for something else and um, it was really really uh, hard for me and I didn't bring it back and it's really heavy compared to what I assume some of the other uh, drill uh, holders uh, weigh and now I get to the most fun part, which is the glow effects on the uh, heavy plasma. And for that, I first used a bit of Corex white to um, paint the recesses so that the color is as bright as possible uh, and gives that glow effect. This is a must have. If, you, if, you, if I would have done it on black, it would have been like... Uh, a really underpowered weapon or something so that would be uh, really weird and yeah painting it on the inside was a little difficult but you can also but it was easily to get to in the end they are not as complex as some of the other stuff I had to do and of course since this is a plasma effect this is the reason that I didn't want to um, drill these barrels for uh, the plasma because I wanted to make that glow effect stand out and I want it to be as bright as possible in the barrel because that's where the in theory the plasma comes from. I also painted the uh, little dots on the weapon because I was going to give them a, another glow as well as all of the lenses with uh, the same white so because I will be coming later on with um, uh, again uh, the three colors that uh, uh, I used to create the lenses on the uh, Tau drones, which is uh, Baharat blue, Temple Guard blue, and then a uh, Drakenov nightshade shade, shade <laughs> uh, in order to uh, get it to look as uh, lensy as possible. Uh, but again, in order for me to make those pop, I had to to uh, give them that white undercoat. And I realized that for the Chasse I needed a red accent color as well, because it, he should stand out as the leader. And I chose to do his antennas with this. Uh, instead of uh, the base green, I went with, of course, corn red. And this will definitely make him stand out even more on uh, the battlefield, uh, in addition to his uh, plasma weapon compared to the Gatlin, can- the Gatlin cannons that the other uh, Shasri have. Um, 
yeah, not much to be said. I saw that uh, this is the way that most uh, painted their tiles, so I went with the same um, uh, idea that they would use like they would devi they they would not deviate from the standard uh, doctrine, so to speak, of uh, the sept and have their um, uh, sergeants paint their helmets and antennas a bit differently. Also, I painted the, his head as well, and uh, with red, you can see it on the background. And then I got started on painting all of the lenses with, as I mentioned before. Temple Guard Blue, Baharat Blue, and of course, um, the Dragon of Nightshade. Now, this is a very tedious process, and it's very hard for me to stay in the position that the camera always uh, films it. But I have also uh, solved this issue, and that is why you don't see me, uh, you see me skipping from uh, one miniature to the other and from different steps without explaining uh, everything but i may have solved that issue because i have found some software that allows me to uh, stream from my phone to my pc while i am uh, filming and it allows me to keep sort of what i'm filming in my uh, field of view and not um, miss out and not be uh, and not go out of the camera's focus moving on finally i get to use that technical paint the warp storm glow on the plasma i like i said i wanted it to be like a greenish effect instead of the usual blue or red and uh it came out looking fine i spilled outside of the uh, white um of the white recesses because I wanted it to be as bright as possible towards the inside and sort of give the impression that the light from that uh, from the glow if from inside is spreading out I think it came out looking pretty okay again especially for my level uh, hey let me know what you guys think if you like it if you don't if I should have gone even more overboard uh, i don't know somehow spray that uh, on the model on the inside of the model where um uh the glow would come but uh, from what i could tell he was indeed keeping it rather far from uh the model not and it wouldn't really really spill over and as you saw before i painted it even on yeah on the inside of the barrel so that the glow effect would be as very very vis visible from uh, inside there also i really need to learn to have patience and wait for the each layer to dry because uh, i really don't have that much patience and especially when i'm painting with a brush and maybe a one coat would be sufficient but while it's still wet i get the feeling that uh it hasn't covered well enough so but when i try to do it with like the airbrush in a single coat i got like the best coverage that i possibly could so i might but again when painting with an airbrush it also really dries really fast because it's very very thin and the blast of air is uh, constant and dries the paint really really fast the final step for these guys was uh panel uh, lining all of the recesses and all the crevices with of course a thin down uh, black color and for this i think i used a uh, null oil yeah i think i am i definitely use null oil and um yeah this is just me going around all over the lines with a thin uh with a th the thinnest brush that i could get and try to make all the lines as visible as possible using of course null oil i'm going to get at some point like i mentioned before some tamiya panel liner and i can't wait to test it. and i might experiment with um oils for this step 
because I saw that uh, they work much, much better, at least for, uh, again, other people in videos. But for now, uh, I'm having difficulty because I'm still working from a studio in my apartment and um, bringing um, uh, white spirit and uh, dilutant in here would not be okay for the people I live with, meaning my wife and my kids, and because I don't have like uh, a special dedicated um, air filtration system or anything, and it would probably smell real bad throughout the house. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to try to do that. Instead, I'm just going to wait, and hopefully at some point in the near future, I will be able to get my painting studio at my house up and running but that's going to be a while the, the see all my content is sort of related because i while i work on my house i constantly keep thinking oh i can't wait to have my shop ready so that i can have a dedicated painting area and working area and while i'm painting uh and what uh, and while I'm working there, I can't wait to paint miniatures there. And while I'm painting here, uh, I'm hoping that um, I will be able to finish those soon so that I, I have a dedicated area to paint and so on and so forth. Yes, uh, again, that's at least the plan. I plan to have like a very big shed uh, workshop with all sorts of tools, but as well as a painting area, filming area, and be able to make even bigger projects. I have very, very big plans for uh, this hobby and for the board games that I have because I have... Uh, again neglected all the miniatures from the other board games that i showed you when i started this channel all of those are coming i really really am banking on that airbrush to streamline the process as much as possible and again speaking uh, about uh, using the airbrush i was able to quite easily use the airbrush uh, in uh, doors and in my uh, living room but, uh, again, I am not very sensible, uh, especially since I was a kid. I had a little accident with my nose and I don't have a sense of smell. But my wife is very, very, very sensible and she was not okay with the small particles of paint that got away in the air. They didn't stain anything. Everything we, I sprayed in a box and everything, but it was not okay for her and I can't. Uh, use the airbrush while she's at home and uh, that's going to make things a little diff difficult because while uh, while I'm alone at home I have to work <laughs> and um, I can't uh, spend time painting so yes uh, only when I take days off or whenever I am able to have a bit of time can I use the airbrush but that should change once I have like a dedicated space that I can do this. So yes, all right. I have caught you all up on all the things that I wanted to discuss about this and I did not mention. But again, it's pretty boring what I have been doing on this is just go over all of the lines on all three miniatures um, with uh, null oil to highlight all of the recesses. And with that, we are coming to the end of this video. I will let you enjoy all the final shots. And I hope to see you in the next one. And if you enjoy this content, please subscribe, share it with a friend, and hit the like button. Alright, bye bye.